Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Diva. This is video 18, and today we're talking about the Tremors panel, part two. So in this video, we're gonna be dealing with this variance column, the reset phase column, and the stack tune column. So as always, let's go to a new preset by right-clicking the display and selecting init right over here. Let's bring our output down just a little bit here, bring our cutoff up a little bit, and then take oscillator two and three out of the mix for now. And let's see what we have here. Okay, so that should work for this here. So basically, this variance column is kind of telling you what it is. It's, it's variant, it's change. So basically, we have a cutoff, we have the envelope times, and then we have the pulse width, and then the glide. So these four parameters, according to these knobs, is going to give us different variants for different voices, right? So let's bring all these down, and let's get a good demonstration here. The, the envelope times and the pulse width times are a little bit more difficult to to notice. However, the cutoff is pretty obvious. So we're going to look at this one. And then the glide is a little bit more obvious as well as compared to the envelope and the pulse width. So for this demonstration, let's go to an analog uh, envelope right over here. Let's bring our sustain down. So we have something kind of quick like that. And a good demonstration is let's go to main. Let's turn our ARP on and then go to one over four. So we have a cons consistent note going on. So if this cutoff is all the way down like this, and then we kind of look over here in the spectrum view, we're gonna expect the same type of cutoff shape. Basically this visual demonstration right here is gonna look the same if this, if this knob's all the way down. Now let's bring this to maximum influence all the way to the right, and now take a look at the subtle changes of the cutoff. So some of these hits are going to be a little bit more open for the cutoff. Some of them are going to be a little more closed and the other ones may be somewhere in between and it's going to consistently change, right? So that now if you notice over here, we don't necessarily have eight knobs like we had in the oscillator voice detune. So if we ever, if we want to randomize those again, we can just click this button over here and then it's going to randomize them once again. And the same goes for the envelope, the pulse width, and then the glide. So same concept, really. We're just using variance for the different voices and basically using that variance on the envelope times, the pulse width, and then the glide. So yeah, that's basically how these work over here. Feel free to experiment with those. I highly suggest you do. It kind of makes things a little bit more chaotic, a little bit more random, a little, a little bit more realistic, I would say. Now here at the bottom, we have LED color, which is pretty self-explanatory, but sometimes if we don't know where to look, we might open up some patches and we might see some blue lights or some different colored lights. And we're like, whoa, how is that even possible? So that's over here in the trimmers panel at the bottom where it says LED color, and you can change them to lots of different colors. So a very cool visual thing over here. So... This reset phase, we're gonna skip over this right now. We're gonna come back to this at the end of the video because I wanted to show you this stack tune. So this is a very, very cool feature in Diva. So this is something that I kind of want to showcase with. So let's go to an init preset here. Now let's take out two and three out of the mix again. So now we basically just have one oscillator. And it's this guy. So with some unison voices and some stack tuning, we can really make a large sound. Now, the way we'd want to do this is kind of first understanding these knobs here. So if we look, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six stack tune knobs. Now, these are going to correspond with this stack over here. If we click this here, we notice we also have six, right? So for these six different voices or the stacking of voices. So right now we have one. So anything with two, three, four, five, or six are not going to have any effect. We can hold down a note. We can wiggle these all day. Nothing is going to change. And that is because each one of these voices has their own specific knob. So if we have stack on one, this first knob is going to change that tuning. We can go all the way down here to minus 24 semitones or down two octaves or the opposite plus 24 sem semitones and plus two octaves. So the cool part about this is let's say we have this one kind of st stuck in the middle. Now let's go to stack and let's go to maybe two voices, right? So we have two voices now. Now we can subtly deviate these voices here to get a wider sound. Now let's add a third in here and subtly change this too. And you can always hold down shift and then move these knobs for very small increments of uh, change. See, that might be a little too much because we're, we're over a semitone, almost a two. So let's kind of double click this and let's just change something so slightly, maybe something like that. Now 
Now we can add a fourth in here. And then maybe add a fifth. Let's maybe go to something like negative 0.10 or something. Okay, so now we have five voices stacked on top of each other, and now we have five of these different tunings kind of deviating from center. So now we can go over to the main tab, we can go to the amplifier pan section, select this LFO2, change that to stack index, and start panning these voices left and right. And then really we can go to this chorus here, select the ensemble, and take a listen to this now. Maybe add some nice plate reverb to that as well. And then this is, keep in mind, this is just with one oscillator right over here and just using stack over here. So let's go to analog, let's increase the release a little bit. And now it's easy to create an ARP here and maybe go 1 over 8 or 1 over uh, 16. So that's kind of a quick demonstration of how simplistic it is to really kind of create a good sounding patch and using one oscillator over here, using some stack and then going to the trimmers panel and kind of slightly detuning these over here. So something cool we can also do if we go to an init preset as well and then take out these other oscillators out of the mix. So we still have one now, right? Now, let's say we wanted to make a power chord, right? We have the uh, the core note, and then we have seven semitones up, creating the perfect fifth, and then we have another octave. So we would need three of those to do that. We're sort of stacking these by three. The first one's fine. We don't have to change that one. The second one, we would want to go up seven semitones, and then the third, we want to go up a full octave, something kind of like that. And then go to ensemble. <laughs> So it'd be kind of cool in that sense. So that's kind of the power of this stack tune, which is very, very interesting. So now let's get into the reset phase. So this is something that you probably won't use too often. And it's kind of a lot of subtleties in this one. So uh, yeah, so let's go to an init preset over here. And then let's change our envelope here to analog. And you'll see, you'll see why in just a little moment here. And let's change this uh, filter here to the byte. Maybe just have one oscillator in the mix right now. So basically, we're here in transient mode, right? So this one is going to be set on analog, but let's go for now, let's check out oscillator reset. So this one's gonna be kind of interesting in the sense that this is going to reset the oscillator phases every time a note is pressed. Now, it's really kind of impossible to hear it if there's just one oscillator in, right? So if we keep hitting notes here, and th for this, we're gonna use another arpeggio so we can kind of hear it a little bit better. something kind of like this. So we just have pulses of noise, right? So back over here in the tremors panel, so this is resetting the phase of the oscillator. And if it's just one oscillator that we're hearing, we're not really gonna hear that much of a change, right? Or really any change, because it's really relative to two different waveforms. So we can move this all day, we're on oscillator reset, but we don't really hear any change. So that's why we need to introduce the second one. Now when we move either the first one or the second one, they're gonna deviate from each other and we're gonna get a slightly different tonality. Now you might ask yourself, why is this useful, right? So if we have these kind of just on default on analog, it's basically going to just 
pick a spot in the cycle and it's going to play and that's just what it's going to be and it could be different for any different voice right so it kind of has that chaos and that's cool but let's say there's some times where we want to make sure all of our oscillators are starting at a specific phase and it does that every single time so that's a situation where we'd want to switch from analog to oscillator reset And maybe sometimes we might be making some percussive stuff or something. We really want these first few milliseconds of the waveform to be exactly the same. Because even once you get to a lower decay, maybe something like this. Like in there, we're going to get a little bit more lower, low mids right there. That one's a little bit more phasey. And again, we have a little bit more lower mids kind of bassy sounds. So it's definitely something to be aware of. So basically we have a couple different choices. So we have the analog we just talked about. We have the offset reset. Now these two are a little bit more difficult to really notice. The DC offset is going to, going to be removing the DC offset here. The VCF is interesting because this basically causes the filter to reset, ensuring that the previous played notes have no effect on the current voice. So if you increase this peak over here, kind of something like this. So we have our tack all the way to the bottom. Do have something kind of like that. And we're kind of just flipping back between the oscillator reset and then the VCF reset. And let's go to maybe two voices here. Let's turn down our detune amount and then our voice drift. So maybe if you don't have headphones or are really critically listening, the real difference is kind of just these initial transients, right? So oscillator reset here, I guess in the combination of these two knobs, doesn't sound as snappy as the VCF one does over here. So again, here's the OSC or oscillator reset. So this one especially sounds very, very snappy. So some, this is maybe something I would pick if I'm doing something kind of percussive or something like that. There's a very subtle, subtle changes here. So it's probably not something you would necessarily use on every single patch or something, but it's one of those things that it's good to know that is there in case you ever need it. And really the last thing we do need to talk about is this bipolar noise. So basically, according to the manual, this was really just included in the versions of diva so it has backwards compatibility for the older presets for the older versions of diva so they say it's recommended to keep this on so you know if if tech says something you might as well do it so might as well keep this bipolar noise selected so that was basically the trimmers part two if there's any questions you guys have please let me know in the comments below and thank you so much for watching hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video